come before you with contrite heart. Humbly I surrender all that I am. I want to learn from you. Please draw me close to you. Let me share your love and grace in all I do. Lord, I come before you with contrite heart. Humbly I surrender all that I am. I want to learn from you. Please draw me close to you. Let me share your love and grace in all I do. episode of Adventist Youth Live and today we have a special program for you so we encourage you to stay tuned as we find out who we are 
Today with us on set is Sori. Say hi to the people, Sori. Hi everyone, we happy Saba to you. Travis with us as well. Hi everyone. And we also have Alenda. Good night everyone and happy and start. You're truly who will be going through the program we're taking uh, you tonight, Kelvin Dragon. So sit back, have a heavenly seat with us as we go through <coughs> Who Am I Today? Um, mm -hmm. As we're here, we'd just like to say a few shout outs to a few of the, um, the persons, um, those in Maranatha, all the way down to the south looking on. All right, you know you're there with us, you wanted to tune in. <coughs> Remember, don't just tune in, but we are sharing God's word. So, as Pastor had always say, like the thing and share it. Like the page and share the page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is what we are doing this evening. All right. Um, do you have anybody you want to send some shout outs to, Travis? All right, so we see Krista Bean, we see Doris George. Doris George. Jenny Williams. I see Shadina Scott is there as well, and she yes. will put out um, a song for singing her <laughs> <Yeah>. entry. <laughs> <laughs> so she's right there. Yeah, I'm Jenny Williams. All right, so we just welcome everyone outside there who's with us. Um, we always really appreciate your, your presence on Youth Live with us. You make the program what it is. Um, I see the likes and the shares coming in, so that yes. means you are there with us. We're going to have a wonderful time this afternoon. Yes. You know, there's a song that says, um, We are a chosen generation, yeah. right. powerful to, to show his excellence. Yeah. And it goes on to say that I know who I am, mm -hmm. right? God knows who I am, right? So today we're going to find out who, who we are, yeah. Yeah. right? Amen. We are a Seventh-day Adventist. Mm -hmm. So we ask you to just relax with us, but don't relax too much because there's so much that's going to be happening here. You might not even have the time to do so. <laughs> but just feel comfortable where you are. Um, we're going to be going through it. It's going to be a very nice ride. So stay with us. We're going to go into our songs and we see we have some there already from Dario Alexander, he says, Happy Sabbath, and he wants hymn number 343. So, Dario, you're going to get your wish this um, this evening. But before we go on there, let's just bow forward of prayer to invite the Lord's presence with us. And Mr. Hall, Travis, you'll be done first. All right. Let's pray. The Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for bringing us here safety. Lord, as we go through this program, Father, help us to talk well, help us to understand the material so that the others may, who are looking on me understand it as well, Father. Lord, help someone to be blessed tonight. Forgive us, cleanse us, and help us do their will. This is our prayer to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Number three, four, three. sin and we know that Amen. our blood um, can't do anything for any sin and his blood is the only one that would have been able to do that so that was the ultimate sacrifice and a sacrifice really needed so that we can have salvation and have it forever true Amen. we're going to go to the second one and that's hymn number three three from miss hamlet she says happy sabbath and she wants hymn number 33 <coughs> sing a new song to the lord realize we're singing a cappella tonight so wherever you are at home you can join with us if you're sitting close to an instrument you can play it as well you may not be able to hear it but <laughs> we appreciate that as well mm -hmm. so hymn number three three sing a new song to the lord mm -hmm. 
Sing a new song to the Lord, He to whom wonders belong. Rejoice in His triumph, and tell of His power. Oh, sing a new song to the Lord. Verse 4. Join in the hills and the sea, tunnels of praise to prolong. In judgment and justice, He comes to be earth. Oh, sing a new song to the Lord. I feel blessed. Don't you feel blessed? Amen. Amen. Yeah, I'm Amen. discovering talents I never knew I had. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it would be like that, you know, in the final analysis when we when we are facing mm -hmm. that time of, of trouble. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you have to be called upon to remember mm -hmm. things you may not know you possessed. And so some of us may be called to, mm -hmm. to attest for our faith and we'll be reciting scriptures that yes. we never know we had. So, I mean, this just reminds me of that. I mean, I, I don't know where that came <laughs> from. <laughs> right. uh, we're going to go to the next one from um, Krista Bain. And she wants hymn number 526. Hymn number 526. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Amen. 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 God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love. Come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Bring 
bringing in the sheep, bringing in the sheep. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheep. Going forth with weeping, sowing for the master. Though the lost are staying, our spirit often grieves. When the weeping's over, he will bid us welcome. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheep. Bringing in the sheep, bringing in the sheep. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheep. Bringing in the sheep, bringing in the sheep. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheep. Sorry. Okay, um, I see Francisca. She wants us to sing 384 three, safely four. through another week. God has brought us on our way. That's Amen. so true. Yes.
for next Sabbath and so you can still participate even not by song but by liking and sharing the page because this is how it's going to get out so Amen. you can use your, your mouse or your if you have touch screen touch your screen if you have your your smart devices you know just touch on that little button that says like and share so that other persons can see what we're doing here and we can get the message I think we have persons viewing from as far as um the UK mm -hmm. so you know the viewership is all over so you need to spread it we have contacts that you may not be able to reach so like and share the page so that persons can really benefit from what's happening here this evening. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we said this evening that we are going to be discussing who am I or who I am. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of persons may have the view that they are this or they are that. And so we're going to really be delving into the topic of identity, but most importantly, what do people see you as? Because a lot of persons go around saying that I am this and I am that, mm -hmm. but you can only say what you think you are, but what do people really say or who do people really say you are? And so we're going to go into a portion of scripture. So wherever you are, let's um, find your Bibles. We're going to read this before we go into that discussion. Just find your Bibles wherever you are. And we're going to go into Mark, the book of Mark, chapter 8, verses 27 to 33. All right, so you should find it by now. Mm -hmm. And I'll read it for you. It says, and Jesus went out and his disciples into the town of Caesarea in Philippi. And by the way, he asked his disciples, saying unto them, Whom do men say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist, but some say Elias, and others say one of the prophets. Verse 29, And he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Peter answered and said unto him, Thou art the Christ. You see, there are many quotations and sayings that allude to the fact that sometimes um, who we say we are do not match up to who persons say we are. And so Jesus would have pulled his disciples aside, right, after doing so many miracles and having so much interaction with people on the outside there. And he's saying, who do you and who do people say I am? Mm -hmm. So, Sir, um, Sir Anna, who would you say you are? Just five seconds. <laughs> five who do you seconds? say you are here? I am Sir Anna Philip. Mm -hmm. Tell me something a little bit more. So that's something. Yeah. Mm, Tell me something I, that describes you. Okay. I I am five feet. <laughs> <laughs> Travis, who, who, do you say, who do you say you are? If you want to say, I am Travis, and then somebody's supposed to say, Travis is this person, based on what you want them to know who you are. What would you say you are? Who would you say you are? I'm Travis Hall, uh -huh. and I'm at MIT. MIT. <laughs> <laughs> For those of us who don't know what is MIT, what is that? Master Guide and Training. <laughs> Alana, you care to share? Who are you? Well, I am Alanda Joseph, and I am a person who brings joy to people's lives. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah, amen. Well, I'm Kelvin Dragon, and I'm a competitor. I don't like to lose. Uh, but I like to share sometimes. <laughs> right? So we all have our, our own identity, who we think we are. Mm -hmm. But the key thing tonight is who do people say you are? You are yeah. out there, you're living a particular life, you're dressing a particular way, you're doing a particular thing, and you think, okay, I am such a good person. 
right? But persons may have a total different view on you. So as we go into um, into this evening's discussion, right? Feel free to share your, your, your views and comments. Remember to like and share the page, but we are going to be delving into who do people say we are. But most importantly, the life we live that would give persons those um, those ideas as to who we are. Amen. And so to, 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 um, to get a true concept of what we're going to be doing, Travis, mm -hmm. right? We're going to be using some some Bible characters, mm -hmm. right? And who persons say they are based on their lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a short break. As I like to say, we're going to pause for a cause. And when we come back, we're going to delve into these characters a little bit more so that persons can understand what we're really trying to bring out here as to who do people say we yeah. are. So we take a short break, and when we come back, we'll go into that. Okay. okay. Welcome back to Seventh-day Adventist Youth Life. I hope you enjoyed that special music there. The violin is an instrument that 
very few people can be accomplished and it's so technical, at least for me. Mm-hmm. I try a little thing on the keyboard every now and again, but you know, I'm not as accomplished as these guys. So wonderful job by them. Um, rushing on a little bit, but not too fast. Mm-hmm. Um, before we go into the meat of the matter, there are some things that the people need to know, Travis. True. Alanda, there are some things that the people need to know. Yeah. Because we are missionary people, you know, there are things that we need to do. We're yeah. not just here to just play all the time, but there's serious time and that's doing God's work. So mm-hmm. there are a few things that's happening around the island. Mm-hmm. Um, crusade. You know, we're always outside into the field. And there's two that I know of right now. There's one in Mount Rush, that's in um, St. George, that's close to the stadium. Mm-hmm. And you're coming from the stadium from um, the western side, you take a left up that big hill. Yeah. It's close to the, um, right, it's close to that, that um, residential area there. Yeah. Right, so that's um, Pastor Daniel Miller mm-hmm. with Elder Rivon Nelson there in Crusade there. Um, it's um, three weeks of mm-hmm. evangelistic activities and we're hoping that some souls are gonna give their lives to the Lord. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know there's a little bit of things around it, but you know, where God is there, there's so much that can be accomplished. True. Right? And there is another one in um in the St. David's area in Corinth. Mm-hmm. And that's Pastor Johnson. I think I have it correct? Yeah. Pastor Johnson. Yes. He's a foreign evangelist a foreign yeah, foreign evangelist and pastor. And he's here on the on the spice I saw to, to spread the message so that persons can give their lives to the Lord. Mm-hmm. You know? But the big one, the big one. Campery 2019. Yeah, Campery 2019. It's promises to be big. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the topic is selfie, hashtag, like and share Jesus. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, selfie, hashtag, like and share Jesus. So it's, it promises to be a big one mm-hmm. because we know everybody is now into the, the social media age, yeah. right? And we were talking here about who do people say we are. And persons now are going to be putting themselves out, outside there because selfie, that is the image you put outside there of yourself. So yeah. who do people say you are when you post pictures of yourself? So that's going to be a big one. It's going to um, be starting on the 18th of April, mm-hmm. right? It's going to be running for four days. So it's going to be a big one. You know, for those of persons who have attended, um, attended Campari in the past, we know there's always been great, but this year it promises to be even greater. Lots of competition, prizes, um, impact. I mean, there's so much that's going to be happening for that for that Easter weekend. So for those of you um, who haven't signed up yet, I don't think it's too late. There might be an additional <laughs> <laughs> cost for late fees, but you can speak to um, Pastor Hilly about that. Right? Um, is there anything that's happening um, at your side, um, Travis? Yeah, well, we have um, church on campus, as the SO. We'll be having the church on campus tomorrow at 9 a.m. Um, it's at Chatter Hall, so okay. all are invited. And that's it. That's it. Anything from your side? Um, nothing happening for now. Just a regular Sabbath service tomorrow? Yeah, it's okay. 13th Sabbath. 13th Sabbath. So. Sabbath. Well, same thing at mine, at the 13th Sabbath. And mm-hmm. then on the 13th of April, it's the um, the community guest day. Okay. Right? So I'm telling you in advance, so those of you who are um, listening of our voices, on the 13th of April, it's community guest day at Maranatha, all the way down to the south. So feel free to, um, to drop by. Yeah, I don't think we missed anything. We missed mm-hmm. anybody. I think that's it. That's it. <laughs> right. So we are discussing who am I, or who do people say um, we are. And we read the scripture earlier, and you know, we said that there are many quotations that persons can, um, can quote. Mm-hmm. Right? But does attending church every Sabbath, mm-hmm. right, uh, for those of our um, brothers of other faith who are, who are listening, attending church every Sunday, does that make you a Christian? Or how do you live your life um, outside of, of um, your, your walls at home, mm-hmm. right? What do people view you as? How do they see you? So can just attending church every Sunday give person the perfect image of you? That's the question we're asking. Mm-hmm. And persons who are home and they're looking on, right? You attend church every Sabbath, you attend church every Sunday. Do you think that is enough to portray that, that good image that you want? Or does it come with a lot more? Do you have a lot more responsibility, a lot more to, to live up to if you want persons to have a good view of you? Um, so we said that we have been looking at a few um, Bible characters. So let's get into it. Um, mm-hmm. We're going to look at Saul. Saul. Tell us about Saul, Charles. All right, so we know Saul was a very bad guy back in the days. Um, his name, Saul... Well, he used to persecute the Christians back then. Um, it had a particular story in the in Matthew. I'm sorry, in Acts. In Acts, I was like in Matthew. Where, <laughs> <laughs> where they spoke about where Paul was just being converted into what we know as Paul, Saul to Paul. Yeah. Um, he was going on the road to Damascus to get the Christians there in the synagogue. So he actually seeked out that mission. So he went to the high priest. Asked the high priest for a letter mm-hmm. to send him to get uh, kill the Christians. I say he was zealous. <laughs> he was <very> zealous. <laughs> so that on his way there, he was struck by um, a big light just at the outskirts of Damascus. 
and he heard a, a voice and he realized that it was God speaking to him saying that what he was doing was wrong. So, I mean, people saw him as a very bad person because of what he was doing, killing mm-hmm. other Christians, but I don't know how he saw himself. I guess he saw himself as a good... But <laughs> based on scriptures, um, Paul saw, I think Paul saw, saw himself as, as a savior because he was doing the work of God. He thought he was doing yeah. the work of God. So, yeah. I mean, just from that scenario alone, um, Paul... Um, persons would say that Paul was a vigilante or well, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, because he uh, right, and from his side, mm-hmm. but the Christians they didn't seem like that. They saw him as a persecutor. Mm-hmm. So you see, Paul may have saw himself as somebody doing something great for the Lord, yeah. or for God, but um, other persons would have been seeing it different, yeah. right? So I mean, to the viewers outside there, you can um, feel free to share your view as well. Um, before Paul was converted, um, who would you say Paul was? Was he a good man or was he a bad man? Because <laughs> Paul in his, in, his, in his own mind thought he was doing good. a just thing. Yeah. yeah. But we know that there was a transformation with, with Paul as well. Yeah. He, didn't, he didn't stay Saul forever. So tell us, tell us about that. So then when he went to Damascus, he stayed there for three days, but he can see because of the blind of the light. Um, then God spoke to him. He fasted and prayed and God showed him the right path mm-hmm. to see. So he saw where he was going in his errors, and then he changed his life to go forth and do the right thing. So but then persons, after preaching and so on, in the same Damascus, people were saying, wait, isn't he the guy that was supposed to come and kill, kill us all? Right. So, I mean, even though he was converted, persons were still seeing his old image. All right. And that is very important that you bring up that old image, because um, as Christians, as Seventh-day Adventists, you may have been living a particular lifestyle before, True, and then you you converted, and persons are still, still associated with that bad with the, with the bad lifestyle. Yeah. So it's very important um, um, to live a particular way because that always comes back in the end, to, as we say, to bite you. Yeah. So it's, it's very important, yeah. and we see that even though Paul was converted, persons were still seeing him for what it was, bef- um, what he was before. Yeah. And just an encouragement here for for um, you as as viewers and Christians. You may have lived a particular life before, and we know we sing that song, the things I used to do, I will do, do them, them no more. more. <laughs> and persons may speak of you, but let when they speak of you, it be of your past and True. not the way that you are living now. Let them say you used to do that, yeah. right? Not that you are doing yeah. that now. Yeah, so that, that's very important. Um, let's just go to, uh, to our viewers here, and they're, they're giving us some, some shoutouts. I see um, Catherine Phillip. She's saying, Happy Sabbath. Um, I see some brother Hall. <laughs> no, 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 brother no, no. Hall. No, no. My mom is online, so she's asking okay. if oh. I'm her son. Mm-hmm. Are you her son? <laughs> so yes, okay. sister Hall, who is online. Yes, I am her son. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, guys, this must be the comedy section. <laughs> we also have um, Harold Joseph. She's saying happy Sabbath, guys. I think I saw my wife earlier and saying um the <laughs> the song services on point. <laughs> uh, I think you're just being nice to me, but. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Especially you very much. <laughs> uh, Sarah, English saying happy Sabbath. Gertrude Peters, um, well done. Catherine Phillip, um, lovely. We have a few persons joining us as well. Um, Carlos Gittins is there. Sherman B. Harry, amen. Um, we have Sonia McDonald. She said, one of my favorite hymns. I can't say which one that is now. But we have a few persons who are, who are in with us. Right? So we encourage you to be a part of the discussion. But what we really want you to do now is don't keep this for yourself. We want you to like the page, share the page. I mean, put it in all your contacts, in all your group chats. I know some of you are in so many different groups. Just ping it. Take it and share it in all your WhatsApp groups so that wherever that person is, you can reach them on whatever platform they are using because you want persons to really hear about this um, bit of information today. It's who am I or who do people say um, you are. Mm -hmm. So we learn a a bit about Saul, right? We learn of his conversion, Mm -hmm. right? And who people said that Saul was. Right, we learned that before his conversion, persons had him as a persecutor, yeah. a ruthless man, uh, you know, uh, an evil guy. Mm-hmm. And post his, confu- um, his, his conversion, persons saw him as, as <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so it's kind of it's kind of difficult. I mean, not everybody saw him as that. And eventually, they came to yeah. terms with Saul. You know, when because he's he really been doing a lot, of, like going right. on different missionary journeys and so on, and doing so much work, like setting up churches here, there, and everywhere. And then right. people started, you know, accepting accepting him, him for as a Christian. Yeah. Right. So your deeds really and truly do follow you. Yeah. So it is very. Um, imperative that you do good deeds um, even though it's not too late now you may have done some bad ones right but let that be your pass um alanda you're there with us yes i yes, am come back, come back to it <laughs> <laughs> tell us about your character which character did you choose today well my character is zacchaeus the wee little man yes tell us a about wee that. little man but what he did he? some massive things tell us about zacchaeus now zacchaeus was um the chief of the publicans right and uh, he was a tax collector and uh, 
he was seen as a, a thief, you know, yeah. and in those days, people viewed the tax collect collectors as, as yeah. thieves yeah. and yeah. traitors, you know, so that that's what men and women saw him as. But then he want he was searching for something. What was he searching for? What was he missing? He was missing the very thing that, or the very person who was actually near to him. Who was that? And that was Jesus, because Jesus was walking through Jericho, and it's amazing how you, how how men and women could, you know, be so not not connected with God, and it's just right there. In their, in their presence, he's right in their space, and yeah. like it just eludes them. Yeah. So Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. He was in the crowd. He was too short, so he had to climb a sycamore tree because he wanted to see who that man was. He wanted to see who everyone was actually yeah, well, all the following. The hype was about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But Jesus knew. Jesus knew, and Jesus said to him, um, he said, in Luke, Zacchaeus, make haste mm -hmm. and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And that word must here is definite because Christ knew that Zacchaeus had to be converted, had to be changed. And when the men and the women saw that, that Jesus was, was with this sinner, you know, they, they looked at him and they wondered, why would Jesus defile himself with a sinner, Listen. such as Zacchaeus? So they saw Zacchaeus as, as a sinner, mm -hmm. and he said a thief, because... Yes. Right. So you see, we look at, we look at Zacchaeus here and the character, and I I'm telling you that whatever you do, even your job, Mm -hmm. Right, can define you as an individual because Zacchaeus, his his profession or, or his career was that of a tax collector, mm -hmm. and so in that trade you may find some level of corruption taking place, and because of that we saw that the people in that time saw Zacchaeus as a thief and a criminal yeah. and a no good, mm -hmm. and a man like Jesus, you now to associate with that with, with Zacchaeus, they saw it as a defilement, mm -hmm. and so it, it's very important that even in our jobs, um, whatever our jobs are, we try to be careful in how we go about doing it because you may be. Um, uh, a banker, so <laughs> uh, you may be a banker, and depends on how you deal with that person, they may mm -hmm. see you as a thief, or you may be working in a shop, mm -hmm. right? And you know, we have things like price control and all these things, and then how you manage a price. So, whatever you do, whichever field you are engaged in, it's very important to carry out that with integrity so that yeah. persons wouldn't view you in a negative light. Because here is Zacchaeus trying to do his job, but because of the, 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 association. the association with money yeah. and also yeah. stealing, you know, yeah. they had him as a as a thief. But tell, tell us about his experience after he met with Jesus. But well, after he met with Jesus, his heart was changed, you know, because he had, son, he had seen the light. He had seen what the love of Jesus really is, yeah. you know, to be casted out as a, as a, as a sinner among men, mm -hmm. how men viewed him. And he knew that there was this one person who, who loved him, mm -hmm. and that was Jesus. And so he was drawn to Christ's love, and he was a changed man. But there's a, something significant about um, the story of Zacchaeus. I was sharing with Brother Hall earlier on. Mm -hmm. Christ said, come down, mm -hmm. for I, today I must abide that thy house. You know, it's just something significant about, you know, the coming down. Some people see themselves, um, you know, high esteem. Mm -hmm. And to stoop low and to be humbled, to come down from where they are yeah. to meet Jesus is hard for a lot of people to do. And it's a contrast to the story of the prodigal son who had to arise out of his, you know, his, his, his low his, state yeah. and to meet his father. Mm -hmm. So that was a very significant part of the story and it just shows how humble we are how humble we must be yeah. in meeting Christ and allowing him to transform our lives. And that's a, a key um, character trait that um, Christians should possess. Um, are you humble? Mm -hmm. you know, um, sometimes I, I mention myself as being competitive and it's very hard for a competitive person to be humble. <laughs> right? But a um, person should not see you as, as somebody who's aggressive and you will do um, whatever it takes you know, to, 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 to succeed. Even if you want to succeed in life, whatever you do, you should not mash and trample upon others. 
right? And it's very important that you mention coming down. Some of us, we even need to come off our high horses wherever mm -hmm. we are so that persons can relate to us. You know, there are some persons, you, they, we refer to them as unapproachable yeah. because they are sometimes so successful and so accomplished in life that you cannot reach them where they are. And sometimes people may have you as, um, they call it stush. <laughs> yeah, you know, we use that word stush, but we do not want that to be the image um, that Seventh-day Adventists or that Christians have, right? You should be approachable, you should be kind, you should be loving, you should have that welcoming personality. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very important, whether it's in our workplace or in the way we carry ourselves, that person should really see us in that light. And the story of Zacchaeus um, shows that how oh, sometimes you have to come down. I mean, not that Zacchaeus was on a high horse, but you can mm -hmm. just draw the parallel yeah. from that, that sometimes you have to come down. Right, because persons may see you in that particular way, whether it's um, accidental or that's just your personality. So you have to be careful how we, how we live and how we deal with people. Um, we don't want you to be left out. Um, those of you who are home, I mean, we're having a great discussion here. But you can pitch in. Who do you think um, Zacchaeus was? Or what, what kind of person you thought Zacchaeus was? I know some of us, we, we heard the stories. We sang so much of songs. And we know Zacchaeus was a, a wee little man. I so I'm sure some of you didn't even know that Zacchaeus was considered a thief <laughs> by many. Right? So we are learning quite a bit here. But feel free to, um, to, share, to share your views. We are seeing um, K, K Knight. She's saying, hi, Alanda. So that shout out is for you. Happy Sabbath. Sorry, you can tell happy Sabbath back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have Jessica Martin. She's saying happy Sabbath. We have um, Sandy. Matthew. And she said, whoa, first time hearing this take on Jesus saying, come now, enlighten and say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But remember, Miss Matthew, do not keep that for yourself. I want to see a little like button on their comment. And I want to see it being shared so that other persons can be enlightened. And you can not just have it for yourself, but you, you can feel comfortable that you will have shared even that little bit of enlightenment. So like the page, share the page so that other persons can be a part of that. Mm -hmm. Next character we will look at and I, and I chose um, is Peter. Mm -hmm. Now for those of us who know what fish markets are like, it's mm -hmm. a lot of confusion and a lot of back and a lot of TV. And Peter was a fisherman mm -hmm. and they had him as a cosboard um, fisherman. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think it could cost more dirty word than, than Peter? Peter was, his, his mouth was vile. Mm -hmm. I mean, he would get angry. He had a hot temper, mm -hmm. right? And so persons who was by the bayside, when they hear that tone, they could say, that is Peter the cuss mm -hmm. Yeah, and hear that is Peter the cuss They could and smell him. Yeah, I mean, even through his walk with Jesus, when Jesus called him, mm -hmm. right? And they were in the garden of Gethsemane when um, Judas would have betrayed him. Peter just... <laughs> I mean, a sword from me, from me, a uh, dagger, and just chop off the man's head. I mean, he was hot tempered. Yeah. You know, he was that type of person. But we saw that 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 Peter, um, even though persons viewed him as a as a curse bird, as a vile man, as an unlearned man, as a hot tempered guy, mm -hmm. um, when Jesus come into uh, comes into anyone's life, there is a change. True. And so, even when when we look at the, the text, and we can go to the text, we can go to the text for reference. I really want us to read that text because it's very important. Um, it's in, let me just get it. It's Luke chapter 22, verses 54 to 57. And I'll read it for you. It says, Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him to the high priest's house. Peter followed at the distance, um, and when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there at the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, this man was with him. Now, that's a follow-up from, the, from um, Peter's reaction in the, in the garden, right? Mm -hmm. Remember, he chopped off the, 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 um, the, the soldier's ear. Mm -hmm. But Jesus went on, you know, he healed him. And then they brought him on to the, to the judgment hall. They stripped him, they beat him and so. But um, to the latter part, when they were doing all these things to Jesus, Peter was sitting there. And because of his, his speech and his demeanor and how he was, that person was able to point him out and say, this man was a follower of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So our, our attitude, the way, we, the way we carry ourselves, person should be able to say, this is a Christian. True. We don't sometimes we don't even have to say anything. Yeah. Right? We don't have to say anything, just I mean, the way we half, carry ourselves. They say half, but more than half the um, percentage of communication comes from your body language and not from what you're saying. That is so true. And we so call that non-verbal. Non I mean, communication, sometimes yeah. somebody look at you and your face is all turned up, you know, yeah. and it's like, no, oh, something wrong with that this person. person. <laughs> 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 I know some persons always walk and they have their shoulder, like, you know, like they have the Something weight of the world upon them. 
I mean, Christians, we do go through our battles. True. We do have our, our struggles and our, our trials, mm -hmm. but we have hope. And yeah. so we should always carry ourselves that we have hope and we have somebody who can really and truly get us out of whatever situation we're in. So a Christian really shouldn't be walking around with, with a droopy face. And we should preach that sermon. Show, yes, that, show others that Christ is with us and we can give him all the burdens, like cast all our cares upon him. For he for cares. Cares for us. So we need to preach with our, just our body languages and not just what we say. <laughs> All right, but our last and most important character for this evening, Jesus. Jesus. Man. Those of you at home, who would you say Jesus is? I mean, and I know some of us say he is comfortable, but what I want you to do, and I'll, I'll read it out as you send it, and I want you to, to get a text for me, right? Who, who, is Jesus, who is Jesus to you, right? Who is he to you? Is he a comforter? Is he a healer? But when you say it, don't just post it like that. I want you to give me a Bible reference, so exactly where you're saying from. If you say he's a healer, I want you to quote from me, where um where that he healer somebody. thing came from or whether he healed somebody or if he himself said that he was a healer i wanted to um to quote it for me so this is your opportunity to share again right whatever jesus is to you i want you to post it and also post um post the 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 the, the, text. the reference the text you know where you got where you got that from but that brings us on to our, our second part mm -hmm. which talks about um how we carry ourselves and how we see ourselves and you know, there's a lot of things about um, how Christians live or how we portray ourselves that would define us. Because you remember, we, we were saying that we are Christians right. and we are telling people that. And you already said that over 50% of our communication, Travis, is non-verbal. Do you agree, Alanda? Yes. Right. So if that is the case, then the way we dress or speak, well, not speak, but um, um, we behave, act. and so that speaks a lot. So let's just look at a few of the things um, mm -hmm. and how important it is um, uh, for um, Seventh-day Adventists, but Christians, right, to, um, to, to portray these things. So for the first one, we look at speech. Right, we look at speech. And let's go to our Bibles, First Corinthians. Chapter 15, verses 33. Can you read it for us, Alanda? Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. So it says, be not, be not what? De deceived. deceived. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Evil communications corrupt good manners. What does that mean? In your own words, how do you, how do you grasp that? Travis, you can feel free to, to share here as well. Hmm. Because we're talking about speech and it says evil communication corrupts good manners. What yeah. does that, what, what do you get from that? Well, hmm, like if you're speaking to somebody in something about something bad, I'll say that what, it, what you're speaking about will reflect on your behavior. Mm -hmm. So say for instance, I like to speak about fighting and, and, and gangs and so on. I might just slowly but surely get into that gang behavior and so on just right. because of that that's that's yeah. Yeah. and we yeah. see it a lot in um in person and that's why it's very careful um when you're in, in in large groups and a conversation is being stayed a particular way um you realize that it's going on an off tone because the way you carry yourself it may not be that that that's the type of person you are yeah. but sometimes just to get into the into the mood Meeting or you're, got, you're getting into character so to speak you um because of the the, the, top, the type of speech that's that's being um, brought out. You start you start um, acting. acting the part. Yeah. yeah? Um, Titus two verses eight says it says some speech that cannot be condemned. That he, yeah, that he, that he that is of that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say to you. And that is so important. If you do not speak anything of um, with guile, or do not speak anything unfavorable. Nobody can say anything bad about you. True. They can't say Travis say, or they can't say Alanda say, or he says, or she says. So whatever your speech is, let it be pure. Yeah, yeah let it be True. pure so that nobody can, can have any disrepute and say, okay, well, Travis said that about this one, especially when it comes to gossiping. Yeah. And that's a big thing that seems to, to trouble a lot of individuals. Mm -hmm. You know, they gossip and they talk about persons negatively and behind their backs and it always reflects badly on you. Yeah. Oh, um, he's a gossiper. He's always talking about people. He's so negative. He's so down spirit. They, you know, they, want, they don't want to be around you. Mm -hmm. So you are saying, oh, I'm a good Christian and I'm, I'm this, I'm that. And you're thinking that you have a particular image of yourself. But really and truly, that's not what persons are seeing. And imagine often. that the persons that you gossip around with, mm -hmm. they are the ones that don't end up trusting you because yeah. they know how you mm -hmm. are. All right, let's just go back to the screen briefly. I'm seeing um, Catherine Phillip, and I guess she's talking about who um, Jesus is to her. She said, Jesus asked me to cast all my cares on him. He is my burden bearer. Amen. We have um, Cassandra 
Sean, Psalms 23. Well, the Lord is a shepherd. Amen. Um, we have, well, yeah, she, she added an after, but we, we, we were on point. As soon as we said Psalms 23, we knew where you were going. Mm-hmm. Um, John chapter 10, verses 11 from Ketisha Judge, she said, The good shepherd, yeah, he leads her, yeah. right? He guides her. Um, we have Luna Peters. Luna Peters. Just saying amen. Well, I guess she, ag- she agrees with what's happening here, <laughs> True. and she's telling us happy Sabbath, <laughs> right? So feel free to continue. Um, Putting in you, as we say locally, your, your two cents, mm-hmm. right? We, we're glad to have you. Remember to like and share the page. Let persons be a part of what's happening here this evening, mm-hmm. right? So we were, we were in speech, mm-hmm. yeah. right? And it's very important that the way, not just what we say, but the way we speak, right? True. Remember tone and so it, it, it says a lot about you. If you have an yeah, aggressive yeah. tone, a violent tone, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes there are some persons there, you might just ask them a simple question and they just lash out at you, mm-hmm. right? You do, that's not the attitude that, that you want to have as a mm-hmm. Christian. Yeah. And it's interesting how Peter had that same attitude, but God channeled his energy into serving him, so making him a fisher of men. Yes. So, right. I mean, yeah, you have that passion and aggression, but instead of using it to lash out and say all kind of mean words and curse words or whatever the case might be, channel it to help him explain or expand the, um, the, the, the God. Yeah. Yeah. What I do realize is a challenge for some persons, and, and we just going to finish off on speech when I say this last thing. Um, person's vocabulary is sometimes a bit challenged. And so sometimes you find they may use negative right, words yeah. to express themselves. But I do encourage us as Christians to read mm-hmm. the Bible more. When you read the Bible more, you get a better way of expressing yourself. Sometimes you are angry, right? And just by reading the Bible, you get a, a broader base and understanding of what is anger. It says we, yeah. we slow to anger, mm-hmm. right? We slow to speak. Mm-hmm. So even if you're angry, you, you're not just going to just lash out. Yeah. Process what's happening. Process what's going to be the, the consequences of you saying a particular thing and then you speak. So you don't react, but you respond. Yeah, and that's very, very important. And remember, soft answers. Turn it away, right? Mm-hmm. You know. We're going to also look at dress, and that's an important one. We, we beat it on, on a lot of different occasions. <laughs> yes. A lot of different occasions. But no matter how much blows we give it, it seems to pop up again because mm-hmm. with, with the current trends in the world now, it, it's very hard to, to keep a, a tab on, on dress. It changes every day. It's, it's dynamic. It, it's it's um, multicultural. Highly <laughs> influenced yeah. by media. Right? So, I mean, dress is a big one. Mm-hmm. And if you're portraying yourself to be a particular thing, um, your dress says a lot about you. True. People see you by the way you dress. Yeah. Right? I mean, there was one time I went to the beach. Mm-hmm. And I had on a short pants and a vest. Mm-hmm. And this um, young lady was like, hey, that is how your foot looks. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, it's a, it's a mystery to her because, I mean, even as a male, I'm always covered. I always, and most of the times I'm in, I'm in long sleeve. When I'm walking, I'm at long sleeve, mm-hmm. right? I'm not saying that something's wrong, necessarily wrong yeah. with a short sleeve. But let that be some mystery still. Mm-hmm. You know, let when a young man um, see you, he still has to wonder what you look like. And so sometimes um, we be dressed a lot because persons wear clothes that, I mean, it just shows sometimes too much and it takes all the mystery okay. away mm-hmm. from, from an individual, right? Um, I just thought yeah. to share that because I thought it was, it was just so funny to me. I mean, I didn't make anything big of it, but as yeah. she said that, it just brought it back. You know, there's, there's, there should still mm-hmm. be some mystery, some mystery um, in intimacy. Mm-hmm. And that's just for um, male and female, boyfriend, girlfriends, um, intended, you know? the young ladies, young men, dress in a particular way so that there's still something to look forward to, Mm -hmm. you know, on the the night of the wedding. Okay. But let's just go back there, Travis. Do you want to say anything on dress? Um, I'll come back. I'll come back. Well, Um, let's just touch Timothy and then we'll we'll come to her. It's a Timothy chapter, um, 1 Timothy chapter 2, um, verses 9 to 10. It says, In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Mm-hmm. So you can start from there and just branch off to what you wanted to say before. I wonder why they like the women though. I, I don't just see women eh? mm-hmm. because um, I think it's, it's both gender. Mm-hmm. It's both gender. Um, women may be um, paid emphasis on there, but that's just one. That's just one text. But it's always both gender. I do not say men only for this and women only for that. And we're in an age now where, where there's um this gender um, yeah. cross referencing and identity mm-hmm. issues, and then we say that okay, the women must do this and the men must do that. But we know that we're in a culture now where this thing has changed. But let's look at it from both aspects, so you can share your viewpoint from both men and women. 
Okay. Well, you know, ever since, like, for the past few weeks, I'm constantly reminded of, of who we are as Adventists. The world knows who we were back then, mm -hmm. right? And they knew they know us to have a certain appearance. So when we try to change our features and we try to look like the world, they they laugh at us. Yeah, because they know what because they to know play. what we profess. And when we try to be like them, they just throw it back in our face. And. We, it's, it's a moment when we should reflect and see, um, okay, am I portraying the character of Christ? Am I representing him in whatever I put on my body? And it just, it's just, as a woman, it's really a challenge because you have to be careful as to what you wear because persons are looking at you, mm. especially when you have leadership roles in the church. Yeah. You know, you have a certain standard to maintain. So, it, it all boils down to spirituality, you know. Christ will reveal himself to us. And with his spirit, we will know how to portray ourselves. Mm, sure. How to portray his image. And you have um, Keisha is chiming in and she said, Our style of dress often tells the world how to communicate with us. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that... Yeah. few words you put there, I mean, it can be elaborated so much more. That's a poor point. Yeah. Because um, there was a discussion once when I was in, um, in, in secondary school, mm -hmm. and it's a very sensitive topic. Um, does a woman, uh, can, can at any time a woman bring upon rape on herself, and whether or not she's deserving of it? And I mean, that conversation went like here, then, everywhere, and there were some persons who were saying yes, because the way she dresses can attract or send the wrong signal. And um, there are a lot of persons who are saying that no woman should be touched at any one time. But remember, we are living in a, in a sinful world, mm -hmm. right? Where persons, um, they don't care what our moral standings are. Right. But if you send a particular signal, right, they would respond. Yeah. And by the way you dress, you can be inviting the wrong type of attention to yourself. Yeah. So I think Keisha is so much on point when she says um, we are inviting the world to communicate a particular way with us. Yeah. Um, we know that there are persons who have the escort service and they dress a particular way, they wear particular jewelry um, in different parts of the body and it's, it's, a, it's a signal, it's, it's mm -hmm. communicating, right? Um, even the powdering of the bosom, I recently learned again that that is a signal as well. So we have yeah. to be careful with things that we put on our body. So not just only the clothes, but the um, the cosmetics and so they are they are telling signs of who we are. Mm -hmm. And so if somebody approaches you, if you wear an anklet on your left um, um, ankle, and they That's ask you how much, mm -hmm. I mean you can't really take offense because yeah. that is their their language. So we have to be very careful with the things that we wear and the things that we put on our body. You travel the other thing, yeah. Um, I think dressing has a lot to do with how the media portray like stars and so on. So, yeah. so like this star may come out with this style, and everybody would follow after that. So even though we preach against it, like the Adventist Church, but because you want to fit in with your crowd and your friends and so on, you dress according to how they dress in, and they are influenced by that same star, and that has a big conflict to what the Bible stipulates as to how to dress modestly. You know with all the bracelets and the gold and the chains and whatnot, brighted hair and shame face and sobriety, we, we, try, we tend to go away from how God wants us to be mm -hmm. because of how the media portray the stars and so on. And that's a big, big influence on how we dress today. So the big question here then, can Christians be in style? Can we look good? Because based on what we're seeing here some persons may be of the notion that because a woman's supposed to be dressed in a big long dress all the way down to the ground mm -hmm. and a man may be supposed to have on like a tuxedo or something like that <laughs> but can christians be in style can we still look good and dress modestly i definitely Amen. think we could still be in style and dress modestly mm -hmm. but just don't go away from how god stipulate we should dress but you know, whatever we put on, you know, there's something within you that will say, okay, this is inappropriate. You will get that feeling. Yeah, you get it. So once you get that feeling, you should know to, you know, change your appearance. But some people, they ignore that little voice. So just two things. I think um, dressing appropriately does two things for you. One, it mm -hmm. helps you um, confidence-wise. 
I mean, sometimes persons dress and their body parts are exposed and they're walking and they have to hide mm-hmm. um, yes. different <laughs> body parts or so and then the, the men know they're walking and they have to try to pull their pants. <laughs> it doesn't make you, I don't, I don't think it gives you that, that, that commanding presence that you want. When persons look at you, they do not see somebody in charge of themselves. They see somebody mm-hmm. sloppy, yeah. you know. And the second part of it is health. Right, health reasons. There are some persons, young ladies, who may dress with um with very short clothing, and then they may have to go on buses and sit with persons who came from construction sites and and cleaning drains and so on. They're sitting there, and you see persons coming in with skin rashes and so all the time. Right, so dress is very important, not just for the fact that it tells who you are, but it mm-hmm. also is very good for for health reasons. Right, so it's very important the way the way um we dress. Yeah? Even the tight jeans for females. That that, that has some very much. Well, Charles, I wasn't going to go but as you mentioned that, that's very important because, no, it, it's true. You see, sometimes we try to negate from these types of conversations and we don't help our people. But the, the tight clothing, right, um, for both men and women, it can lead to, to um, bacterial and even um, um, yeast, well, not yeast, but um, fungal infections. And we see a lot of young ladies um, coming down with recurring yeast infections and so. And that can be attributed to the, the tight clothing because you're in a very hot environment, mm-hmm. you're sweating in that area, and there's no breathing room, there's no no um, place for air to pass. And so that sweat there in that environment is a perfect environment for bacteria, bacteria and fungus bacteria. and so to grow. So I'm saying it's very important, not just for the way people view us, but also for health reasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we have a few persons sharing their views there. We have um, Shama Francis says, as Christians, our life should always be Christ-centered. The world should always see Christ in us. That's very, very important. Um, it also goes on to say, also remember that our body, very important point, our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. We should glorify God in it. And so if we take care of the physical church temple where we go to worship and we try to make sure that it's properly it's kept good, and so, so, we should do the same with our body where the Holy Spirit dwells and should not um, have it just exposed to the elements and to the, to the viewing public as a showcase. Mm-hmm. You know, very important. We look at our next, um, our next part, our association, hmm. our association. Persons view us, they look at us, but they say, tell me your, your friends, you, you know, you. and I'll show you who you are, I'll tell you who you are. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 13, verses 20, it says, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, wise but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. destroyed. What's your take on that? Walk with wise people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's so straightforward. Um, because if you associate yourself with, like, bad company and so on mm. like i said before you usually as tend to try to be like that yeah. kind of association the so influence rubs off right the influence they influence your behavior they influence your speech they influence the way you dress yes, and so yeah. on and as a result mm-hmm. of that persons would not see christ in you so you would not be portraying christ you'll be portraying whatever they're trying to portray which is definitely not christ Mm-hmm. I have no idea what they're trying to be putting. Mm-hmm. Bring up our next saying that boys of a feather flock together. <laughs> and so right. while you may be trying to, to say, okay, I'm a Christian, but you're, you're in heavy association with persons who are not portraying Christ-like attitudes and mm-hmm. behaviors and manners and speech, then persons just see you as the group. The group now becomes the identifier and not right. the individual. And mm-hmm. before we go to that, yeah. another thing too, um, in the Ten Commandments, it says, thou shall not bear false witness. That doesn't mean <laughs> thou shall not lie. It just means that if you have Christ in you, you should portray Christ and not anything else other than Christ because you'll be bearing a false witness of Christ. That's true. You understand? Yeah. So, I mean... Because you're saying you're a Christian and you're not, and you're not living you're up not to it. So, yeah, like, yeah. so you're actually sinning by doing that. Okay. We have um, Eve. I want to get that pronunciation right. Mm-hmm. Anomit or Enomit. You say, hi, I'm a born-again Christian, though I am not an Adventist. But you are very enlightening, and I enjoy listening to everything that you are teaching. Keep up the good work, because these teachings are very necessary to keep Christians on the right path. Thank you very much, um, Ms. Um, Inomit. Um, mm-hmm. that, that, that makes me feel very happy. Yeah, <laughs> that makes me feel very, very happy. Um, please like and share. Um, it would be very nice to us where you are um, sending your message from. from sorry. Um, that would be great as well. We also have um, Logi. She's saying, um, in everything, you should let the Bible be your guide because you can be led astray by persons in the church also. Very important. It can be very subtle. And she makes a poor pack point there because mm-hmm. you mentioned um, earlier in dress that there are persons looking at you. Yes. And the young persons, they look at the older one as a cue to do wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because um, let's say the, 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 the church may have a stand on, on jewelry. 
-hmm. and they're looking at a senior person in the church who starts wearing jewelry they say okay well if she's mm -hmm. wearing it or if he's doing it then i can do it as well mm -hmm. so that's a very important statement that you make because even in the church a person who's in the church can lead you astray True. right but we are making a point on association before we went to the um, to the viewers. Oh yes, on association. Um, you know, some of our young people they don't see it as dangerous to associate with friends because they say, "Well, that's my friends. What do you want me to do? Give them up?" But in cases such as these, what do we tell them? Well, that's an important point you make. So, in a sense, we're saying, can we associate now with our friends because they are not representing Christ, mm -hmm. but we we know them from school or so. Right. And how do we deal with relationships like that? Because it's some form of association. Mm -hmm. How do we deal with, with with individuals like that, Travis? I mean, we have to be the leader, the most influential person among that group, because Christ associated with sinners. You know, he went and uh, Zacchaeus. Mm -hmm. He associated with Zacchaeus, and Zacchaeus was known as or associated that with a, a with being a, a thief and liar, or whatever the case might be. Mm -hmm. So, but Jesus was an influencer on Zacchaeus. Yep. So mm -hmm. we should be the influencer among our friends if we don't want to lose them. Because if we allow friends to lead us astray, then that will cause, you know, chaos. We'll be considered fools according to the Bible. Mm -hmm. So we should be the most influential person among that sort of group. Mm -hmm. That's true. We have um, Rasko Miller also saying we can also lead ourselves astray as well. Mm -hmm. Don't always blame others. And that's so important. We are our own individuals. Um, we have our own identity. We have our own minds to make up. Mm -hmm. And so while other persons may have some influence over us, um, we can also lead ourselves astray by the way that we conduct ourselves. So we shouldn't always just blame others. That's a very important point. Mm -hmm. We should take responsibility for our own selves. Right? But we mentioned association. It should be the intent. We have friends at school. We cannot not have um, associates yeah, and friends yeah. at school. Just by virtue of being in schools, you would know these persons. Mm -hmm. But it, it's um, our way of dealing with them. If you realize that these persons have a negative um, influence on you, then yeah, you should only associate with, them with, associate with them as necessary. Mm -hmm. So maybe you might need to do an assignment. You do the assignment and you move on. These may not be the persons you want to have as hangout buddies. Mm -hmm. right? So you just associate with them as needs be. And um, maybe when necessary to share the gospel, you may have, be having a conversation on a particular thing. Mm -hmm. Always throwing the Bible in it. They may be talking about sex. Use that time to say what the Bible has to say about sex. They may be talking about food. Use that time to say what the Bible has to say about food. But you can, in essence control or direct the discussion rather allowing yourself to become influenced by the discussion yeah. but one thing we have to remember too um some of our young people they don't really make informed decisions you know so it is critical for our parents for the parents also to be watchful you know of the kind of associates that their young their children um yeah but they have a wrong with yeah. yes yeah, so yeah. And, and not just and not just tell the children you can't associate with this person Explain them. to them why you should not associate with this because we live in an age where they call it the why generation because they always want to know why. If you don't tell them why, yeah. they will mm -hmm. go against what you say one time. Yeah, so at know. least come to them and explain to them why they should not associate with these sort of people mm -hmm. and then they'll try to understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's not like before where you tell a child just do this and they will and do, you do it. And right? I think information is key and we say knowledge is power. So if they're coming to you and they're asking you why, that is an opportunity parents for you to educate and inform your children as to why they shouldn't make this, um, these types of decisions. Use your own past experience where you would have um, went around by association or dress or speech so that they can learn from your mistakes and not learn from their own. Mm -hmm. It's better to learn from somebody else's <laughs> mistake from, from your, because your consequences is you may not like it or you may not be as fortunate as other persons who made those same mistakes. We have um, um, Matrin again and she's mm -hmm. bringing um, some points. She says, this week I was having a conversation with my friend about this same thing. The friends you choose to walk with is very important. I used to say that my friends couldn't, that my friends couldn't make me do anything that I don't want. That I don't want to. When my mom used to warn me, now that I am older, I am seeing how silly I was to think that. The people you choose to associate with, the people you associate with, determine the places you go, mm -hmm. the way you dress, the conversations that you and the conversations that you hold. If your friends are not bringing you to, not bringing you closer to Christ, then they are not your friends, and you should not, and you should stay away from them. Now that's a very powerful statement. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can end right right here, yeah. right? I mean, it's, it's very important for us to understand that um, not everybody can be our our bonafide 
or best friends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There are some persons who you would have as associates, there are some persons who you have as colleagues, but you can't have everybody buddy buddy. Yeah. Because we may say, oh, I have the influence and I am the Christian, I would be able to control all of that. But yeah. as Travis, as you correctly said, when you're in that... <coughs> That environment and the, the 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 conversation is there and persons start speaking the different dialects and jargons and so yeah, you just it's so easy to, to just yeah. gravitate towards that. Yeah. I mean, I remember when I was younger. I have so much stories. <laughs> when I was younger, I had this friend that went to Montserrat for a few years. Mm-hmm. You know, really really good friend. And when he came back, he started speaking in the um, twang, and I just picked it up easy. <laughs> I mean, it was second nature to pick it up. And so sometimes we think that our friends cannot influence us, but they really can, whether it's by speech or by dress or the way they eat, right? So that's a very important point. But don't worry, I don't blame you because I do like the ones <laughs> twang, though. We have, um, you know, mate saying again, yes, you are right, that we should be influential as Christians because we do have to show Christ to a corrupt society that is journeying on the, on the right path that leads on the on the white part that leads to destruction. Also, um, the young lady in the middle said um, absolutely the right. Well, we missed we miss that yeah, part there. We missed that, that part there. More. Yeah. yeah. But um, I think you're on the right track in terms of um, we should be the, influen- the influencers mm-hmm. as, um, as Christians so and I'm should not allow the other persons to. Should I read to it? Yeah, just continue with us. Also, what the young lady in the middle said is absolutely right. The parents do have to be watchful about the association that children have because. As we know, the devil is looking to gain a stronghold in the minds of many children. It is unfortunate that many parents take this that serious but leave their children to the prey. To the prey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And sometimes parents know um, if you look at it, they are so buddy buddy with their with their children. Mm-hmm. Parents, you cannot be your children's best friend. Mm-hmm. Because best friends hold secrets, they give they give yeah. bad advice and so you have to be the parent. You cannot be the best friend. You can be a child's friend. Yeah. But not a best friend because there are many times you have to make yes. difficult dis- um, dis- decisions and withhold them from going certain places with certain individuals mm-hmm. just for their own their own benefit. You said mm-hmm, like you have something like a strong belief in that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, Federico Lessi said we ought to remember that we are ambassadors for Christ. Very important. We are ambassadors for Christ in wherever we go. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So we see that association brought out quite a bit of discussion there. The persons mm-hmm. that we associate or, or, or we are wrong, they have a great deal in how, how we are shaped. Mm-hmm. And that, that's so true because yeah. look at us today as individuals. We were shaped by our families and our societies. Yes. So we cannot say that persons don't have influence over us. So we have to now be very careful who we allow to shape, um, to shape us um, so that persons can see us for who we want them to see us as and not for what we are shaped as. What's about behaviors and mannerisms? <laughs> Does, is that important in how people view you? Yeah, suppose I'm walking down the road and I have a, a bump, a uh, kind of kick in my step. Like a, like a <laughs> swag? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do people say that I am? <coughs> mm-hmm. Some sort of gangster or something? They might say a swag. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it does have an association with how people view you, like the way you carry yourself. If if you you keep lashing out, the people, people might say you're an aggressive person. I don't want to associate with you. If you if you know whatever you do, people would associate what you do with who mm-hmm. you are. That's so you need to whatever you do, be mindful of it because. And I mean, I I remember growing up, and these are things I'm not sure um, how people view it now. But the good morning and the good yeah. afternoon and Miss So and So and Mr. That. So and So, these were things that you were you were taught at a very young age. You don't they just say. Um, um, you just pass call the man first name yeah. like with you and his companion he would pull you back and say if I'm here you look like companion but these titles are mystery yeah, they, they mm-hmm. taught you how to have respect for your elders and I mean we look at the American society you know where persons like just passing people on the street like boom yeah. boom boom and no one really cares um, what happens to this person if they had a bad day but in, in Grenada I think we're still okay yeah, we but it's, it's slowly dying away and I think manners was, is a big thing in Grenada still mm-hmm. and it was a big thing but it's still a big thing and persons look at you how you carry yourself um, as you walk along, mm-hmm. when you're in school, when you come to church, the good mornings, the good afternoon. They go a long way in how persons view mm-hmm. this. You're such a well-cultured young, young yeah. lad. <laughs> Who's your father? You know, it, it speaks volumes for you and it can help you um, in the future. And we'll talk about future in a while because um, the way people view us have a great um, impact on um, our future in terms of um, job opportunities and so So we're discussing this to go somewhere. It's very it's very important. And um, we'll just look briefly um, 
at, at just just finalize briefly manners. Mm -hmm. Um, we were talking about the way you carry us and the way you carry yourself on a good morning. But that's not only the way you the way you carry your your, your appearance, your face as well, right? Um, we talked about it earlier in speech, but your, your personality in terms of how you carry yourself goes a long way. Mm -hmm. um, whether you're japa, whether your face is like serious and unapproachable, yeah. that goes a long way in how persons view you. Because you may think that you're the, the, the friendliest person in the world, but your face says, so, says otherwise. <laughs> yeah, and even though you may be having a bad day, the person saw you, yeah. you know? But um, they'll just know that, well, this person always have a nice demeanor. They have a bad day today. They'll just associate your demeanor with a bad day because they know who you are by, mm. you know, what they are accustomed to seeing you. Right. Well, we'll just cut it for now. We'll go and take another item of special music. And when we come back, we'll just look at how all these different um, characters and attributes can shape our future in terms of um, what person, a whole person's viewer. So we'll take an um, item of special music and when we get back, we'll just wrap up with the last bit of information as whole person's viewers and how these things can affect our lives in the future.
great. So we have a little quote from Eve, and it says, Yes, exactly. Growing up in Greenwood Household, I'm glad that I was taught the importance and benefits of manners, which is a big thing. But it's sad to see the, that younger West Indians, especially those living abroad, are not teaching their children what we grew up with in terms of manners. Teaching children our values as Christians and as West Indians set the tone for a better foundation for children. Unfortunately, however, younger generations are trying to abort teaching the children the values we grew up with. Mm. So that's still under manners. And what did the quote say about manners? So you that Grenadians are well mannered. <laughs> From Steve Marable. You can speak with spiritual eloquence, mm -hmm. pray in public, and maintain a holy appearance. But it is your behavior that will reveal your true character. Yeah, that's so true. Um, Titus 2, verse 7 and 8, it goes on to say that, In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, and sincerity. Amen. So it shows that manners make it the man. Yes. And it goes, it goes quite a long way. But we were mentioning earlier that these different um, character traits and attributes, they can um, influence our future and play a big factor in what happens to us as we grow older and as we have to interact with persons. But there are some others that we can just touch on very um, um, briefly, like our academic achievements, mm -hmm. also punctuality, choice of music, um, the career we mm -hmm. decide to choose, um, the morals and values that we, that we possess, and also church. These different things can really um, shape the way persons view us, but also affect our future or in our going forward. Um, many people have opinions about what others say about them, like it doesn't really matter. They may say, okay, well, whether Travis thinks I am this or that, it doesn't matter. But it does, because at some point in time, uh, in future, Travis may be my boss. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, or Travis may be the teacher of one of my children. Yeah. So um, what are some of the areas um, in which our, or the, the way people view us can affect us? Um, one of them is choice um, for prefix. You know, for the younger ones, you may be saying, oh, well, if I um, behave bad, or if I wear this, or if I um, comb my hair so, or wear this short, short skirt, it doesn't matter. I mean, I can do what I want. But when time comes around for, um, for selecting prefects mm -hmm. in school, and the teachers have to look at you and how you carried out yourself from Form 1 all the way to Form 5, mm -hmm. they're not going to select you. And then you may feel a way because all your friends now are getting their prefect badges and they are, they are honored among the students because being a prefect is a big thing. Mm -hmm. And then you are not selected and you may be feeling why but I get good grades and all these things. But it's mm -hmm. not just about the grades. It's, are you a model for the yeah. children to look at? Would you command their respect yeah. if they select you? And when the teachers look at how you are behaving and your, your attitude and your dress and who you associate with, they would know that you are not the right person to, to award a uh, um, prefect. Yeah. What's another area you think that... that can affect us. Captains, so like selecting captains, for instance, in master guides and yeah. binders. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you're choosing a captain for a team, you, the person needs to be respected. They shouldn't be like persons that persons view them as somebody they could walk over or disrespect or so yeah. on. So you need to command respect and so on. So you need to dress a certain way. You need to um, have a proper mannerism. Hold yourself, yeah. Hold yourself in a kind of carry yourself mm -hmm. properly. Um, be spiritual because it's not just military actions we do in Massacre, but we also command spiritual lifestyle and so yeah, on. You're trying to lead persons to Christ, so that's mm -hmm. very important. Exactly. So you have to have all these attributes for a particular captain. So, yeah. What's about you, Alanda? What area do you think that that can affect an individual in terms of how persons see them? Well, you know when you, you select a partner... Uh, <laughs> are we hinting at something else? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, that partner represents you. Yeah, that's true. Because right? two becomes one. Mm -hmm. so. And that partner also represents Christ. Yes. So if, if you choose a partner and that partner does not represent Christ, then you know there's a problem. Mm -hmm. And some of our young people are, are trying, are, you know, I don't know, they, they are attracted to the, to the men, the boys and the girls, or the young men and the young women who are out of the church. Because they love the thrill. <laughs> True well, we don't know, but we have to pray because you know we have a um, an image to maintain. Yeah. And when persons see that we are doing anything and we are getting away with it, you know, they will they have seen that we have dropped our standard. But like the thing is, like the quote unquote bad boys. Yeah. yeah. So That's we true. have to maintain that character and image of Christ. Mm -hmm. What's about promotions? 
Mm-hmm. I mean, there are working persons who are viewing, and then we look at um, we look at persons in the job place, and they may be saying, "Well, how come I can never get a promotion? This person come in two years or three years after me, and they are getting the promotions." <laughs> How does the boss viewing you have to do with you getting the promotion? It has a lot. It has a lot mm-hmm. because if your work ethic is poor, if the way you speak to the customer is poor, if your your attitude and your, and the way you carry yourself at work is is, is you know, Bad. then the boss wouldn't look at you as the right person to just look for, let's say, um, operations manager, right. because you wouldn't be able to motivate persons if you're always pessimistic and you're always grouchy and you know they wouldn't look be able to look at you and say this is a person that I can put in charge of all my staff, yeah. right, and we can get things going. So it's very important the way we speak, the way we dress, the way we behave, yeah. um, even on the job place, because that can really affect um our career again and she's saying i must say that the program tonight is very enlightening thank you am i glad i stayed up i'm glad i stayed up too i'm glad i'm here with you <laughs> i'm having yeah i stayed up on yeah I'm, I'm glad i'm here with you because this program is one that that very that is very enlightening as she said but it's also important because the discussions like these are not really had on these on, on these forums very much mm-hmm. um, when you look at social media um, you see a, a lot of different discussions True. and that's why a program like this is very important because it brings a little bit more positivity mm-hmm. so it's not too late they can still like and share the page so that persons can be aware of what's happening here they may not be able to get everything tonight but um on the next episode they may get something from it so share them so next time when they say um youth life start it will pop up on their page so like the page and share the page mm-hmm. yeah Amen. another area um is credibility travis very important yeah. Credibility. I mean, if you want to rely on somebody, you must have high creds, right? Mm-hmm. Because I mean, if 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 I can't trust you or or rely on you, then I mean, it doesn't make sense. You would not be selected for anything that I need help with. So I mean, if you carry yourself in a particular way, trustworthy or somebody that is credible, could hold information, could do different things, I will select you. Yeah. So I mean, you you set yourself up for you know a lot. Mm-hmm. That's important because I would say to you that um, even in our in our in our groupings, mm-hmm. um, we may call some somebody's name for a particular thing, and we'll be like, no, 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 not that person, mm-hmm. because you know that person they might say, okay, well, I'm going to be here for five o'clock, and you're waiting half past five, um, twenty minutes to, to fifty yes. minutes, and the person's still not there, not and the person they always saying that they're going to do this and they're going to do that, and they never seem to be there, they can't be on time. Not so when one. when you are not being called upon to do things, it's not because maybe you're not a resourceful person, but you have not given persons the appearance that um, you are a credible person. Mm-hmm. Um, Shama Francis says that's why we should have um, to continue to teach our young people to be equally yoked, and that's important. And we also have. Um, um, Kisha Drake, she's saying, presentation of self to society, I believe, is a key element in the realm of character building. Society, society can be cruel and judgmental without knowing the nitty-gritty about someone's life. However, we cannot allow another person's opinion of us to become reality, or else we would go about life consuming our tie. tie. And that's very important. Mm-hmm. And I, we mentioned that earlier, because we looked at all these Bible characters and... and um, how they would have changed when they met Jesus, but persons were still seeing them as negative. So it's important that when we put ourselves outside there, mm-hmm. even if persons are saying things bad about us, it should be about our past. Let our present work and the way we live now speak volumes for us. Um, Logi says we must remember that we ought to be amb- ambassadors. ambassadors Yeah, for Christ. Our entire way of life should speak for him. People are looking at us and our behavior can cause a brother to stumble. Very important point here. I never understood that fully until I fell from grace. Amen. Yeah? So as we close off, I just want to read this a little bit for you. It says, um, once we live lives that are pleasing to God and act according to his will, our witness to others will be positive and will most likely be in favor with man and mm-hmm. definitely with God. Amen. And First Corinthians chapter um, 10 and verse 31 says, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Amen. Do all to the glory of God. So I trust that our, our task here was done, mm-hmm. right? But um, what I would ask um, as um, before we close off finally, is there any closing words or any encouragement you want to give to the young persons and adults and um, Christians, non-Christians, Seventh-day Adventists, non-Seventh-day Adventists who are looking on? Any word of encouragement or advice you have for them? I would say just be watchful of your mannerism and because a lot of people are looking at you and 
people people may hold you at a high pencil like looking up to you as a role model and if you let them down like the the, the lady said it could cause a brother to stumble yeah. so please be mindful of the way you carry yourself how you act what you say what you whatever you do do it all to the honor and glory of god Amen. well what i can say is that um you cannot represent Christ if you don't have Christ. So I encourage the young people and also myself that we should ever strive each and every day to have that connection with God and to grow in spirituality. And then we will see him working through us to mold and fashion us after his image. Yeah. Well, I would say, um, like Christ would have asked, his disciples, who do men say I am? And so sometimes it's, it's important to find out what persons think of you. And um, from time to time, you have friends, just ask them, what kind of person do you think I am? Mm -hmm. Right? Because um, your friends sometimes may be able to give you the honest truth. And in doing so, you may be able to make adjustments to your, to your life, maybe the way you interact with people, because you may have taught yourself being harmless in those areas, but just by persons giving you their honest opinion. And not that you have to take every single thing because there are some persons that, that can just be a bit too much, but it's good to hear criticism about yourself and to see the way in which you can improve and benefit, most importantly, the kingdom of God. Because at the end of it all, um, our lifestyle is our greatest um, testimony, our greatest sermon. And so let that lifestyle be one that can lead persons to, um, to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And we'll just use the, this song to close off. Mm -hmm. um, hymn number 482, it says, Father, lead me day by day. And how fitting to allow Jesus Christ to lead us as we try to portray him as the true author and finisher of our life and our faith. Amen. Hymn number 482, Father, lead me day by day. Four eight two. Mm -hmm. 482, for those of us who are home getting your hymnals. particular point we know that prayer moves mountains and so much things can happen when when brethren pray for each other so whatever it is at this time you want or you need or you, you're reaching out to God for you can just send it in and we would pray and we would ask God to fulfill whatever it, um, it is that you're, you're in need of according to his will obviously and of course and we just hope that um, well not hope we know that God answers prayers he does say hold on sometimes but we ask you to hold on just send in your prayer requests and as we pray we know that God would would really take them in and we know that the blessing would be yours Amen. So, let's bow for a word of prayer yeah. most kind and gracious and eternal father in heaven God we continue to linger in your presence even a little bit longer dear God we know that from time to time we may not always reflect the character that you want. And so even at this point, oh God, we ask that you would just give us the, the, the courage, dear Father, and the encouragement, dear Father, to make the right decisions. We know, oh Father, that you would have made so much sacrifices for us, even up until this point, dear God, so that we can be molded, dear Father, and shaped and fashioned, dear Father, into a true ambassador, a true kingdom citizen, oh God. And dear Father, when we fail you, we give persons the wrong idea, the wrong view of what it is like to be a Christian. When we fail ourselves, oh God, we do not just fail ourselves, but we fail you. Help us, oh God, to just continue to reflect you. And even when we stumble, dear God, help us to repent. But most importantly, to allow persons to know that this is not the way. Dear God, you have shown us the way and you said this is the way to walk in it. Dear Father, help us, dear God, to just 
remember all the examples that you would have taught us how to be patient how to be slow to anger how to how to turn away wrath to god how to live with our neighbors how to love their father how to share how to care there's so much examples in your word as to how we should live peace be with all men dear father you have given us time and time again these examples help us dear father to take it into fruition and may it bear fruit and may we reflect truly what it is to be a christian dear god there are so much persons out there now who are in need dear father of your of your healing touch dear god there are so much who may be in need of um, your financial blessings there may be so much who are in need of so much different things oh god all of which i may not be able to to to, to speak out of but dear father because you would have created each and every one of us and you know every single here in our head you know our needs so whatever it is dear father these prayer requests are coming in i ask that you would bestow upon these persons as they desire according to your will their father may they not turn away from you but may they continue to seek you first O god and we know that everything that they ask for would be granted their father in accordance to your will so that they would not turn away from you but that they would stay on the straight and narrow Continue to be with all the viewers, dear God, as they would have participated tonight. May the blessing, dear God, be theirs. May their life, dear Father, would have been improved just by the short discussion here. And may they share, dear Father, the information that they would have gathered here. May it reflect, most importantly, in their life. And may they look at whether it is their profiles or their wardrobe or their friends, dear God, whatever changes that need to be made, oh God. May this discussion here, God, pump that, but not just pump and motivate it, but may they also execute the decisions that they have already made in their mind. Be with us, dear God. Be with the persons who have sent in their prayer requests. Be with the persons who are viewing. May they continue, O oh God, to look towards you, O oh God, as the, the only true one who can guide their decisions. Be with everything that was done here this evening. And may persons continue to look towards you as the one who would show them the way home. Guide us, strengthen us, and direct us in all things we ask. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a good night, viewers. Until we see you again next Sabbath, this is Youth Alive. Amen.
they shine a light to a darkened world And always live your truth in every way May your love for me be seen by everyone And lead others to trust and love you more